our hearts and minds to get a glimpse and insight into your word lord so that you will speak to us your voice will be heard and your spirit will stir our hearts and change for we ask in jesus name amen yes so last time when i i i spoke on romans 12 but then as i said things have changed india has changed i have changed in the last 2 3 months and in the last uh, few months what we have seen is something that we have never seen or probably will never see in our lifetime thousands of young men and women have left behind small children huge loss of life and money there are few who have gone bankrupt still battling in icu some of them uh some are back home and those who never went to hospitals or were not sick they also have undergone a change some of have gone through immense emotional stress i hope you'll agree with me hearing and praying for friends and relatives how do we make sense of all this what should be our response worry which we are already doing obviously not then what do we do in these times in times like these what do we do what is god's expectation and that's what we will see today what we will do and so the title for today's message is in times like these i will first seek his kingdom and his righteousness in times like these i will first seek his kingdom and his righteousness so can someone quickly read this without losing much time matthew 6:25 to 33 you can use your bibles therefore i do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not so much more valuable than they who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life and why do you worry about clothes see how the lilies of the field grow they do not labor or spin and i tell you that not even solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these and if that is how god clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire will he not much more clothe you for you of little faith so do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow or tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own thanks raju so the so we begin with our first point the first a anxieties are for those without god he begins with the verse therefore i tell you do not worry about lo- about your life or what you will eat or drink about your body what you will wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes now what were the worries during jesus time the worries during jesus time was basic what to eat or drink and what clothes to wear right these were the basics during the time of jesus and that's what he's addressing that don't worry now what is the worry number one worry during our time these days it is corona virus this is our biggest worry right now of course this is temporary but this is our worry because of the first wave second wave and we are all now worried about the third wave which 
the rumors tell that this may affect children we are worried if you'll survive or if we lose our jobs right uh, the virus may remain this year and maybe linger in the next few years until all in india get vaccinated and revaccinated right while the worry of the virus will slowly fade away our other worries will remain what are our other genuine worries during our time is it food and clothing even the even those living on streets i don't think they are worried about food in hyderabad or most part of our countries are they worried about clothes no that is in plenty what is the worries that you and i genuinely have our world is more complex than what it was 2000 years ago so what are our worries if you look at our worries first worry is a job right even when you get married or you want to give in marriage you will see if the boy especially has a job this is our worry employment how worry is if i'll have a house to stay a decent house i can't live on the streets and this is the biggest worry for all parents education for children tell me the truth are in these our worries these are our worries and you know the virus will go away but these worries will remain and during this time also this has bothered us now if you look at jesus time worries were about sustaining sustaining life itself our worries today is to maintain a lifestyle that is our worry even christians go through this difficult time right and this is nothing to do with whether you are rich or poor all are worried and what does jesus tell in verse 32 pagans run after these things pagans run after these things they chase they pursue right they chase and pursue about the worries of the world and they have become bigger in the pandemic right and sadly many christians also run they also pursue why why do christians who have a god still worry and pursue and chase after these things and the lord says oh you of little faith oh you of little faith christians with little faith also run after these things they are worried they are worried if they will have a job they are worried if their children will have a future so the church is therefore in many ways like the pagans of the world or those without god and the pandemic has only exposed our spiritual life and our maturity and what happens when we worry about these things about a job about a children's education and all these whether i be able to buy a house what happens you know when the lockdown was announced or is getting announced what happens what people do they suddenly go to supermarkets and hoard even though the government tells the essentials will remain but still there is an anxiety and what people do is hoard and that is exactly what happens when we are worried we start hoarding and accumulating wealth and that's what just previous few verses verses 19 and 20 the lord says do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth and that is what many of us are guilty of because we are worried so we hold bigger the worry list larger the hoarding if your worry list is 5 you hold 5 units probably if your worry list is 10 you hold more and that's what the lord jesus is addressing here when he says we start right 6:19 so we start holding and accumulating wealth storing treasures on earth we become slaves to wealth our giving gets affected and we at best imitate the world when you look back uh, during the pandemic 
all the waves lockdown other than that. how many of our worries were connected with material wealth ask yourself honestly just think about it and it is very natural did you worry about your job your career or your promotion what about my children's future you know we have two daughters and one of them is in the 12th are we worried yes that comes what will be the future her exams are cancelled now she has other competitive exams to give so those worries come to us and because of this worry are we holding have you reduced your giving in the last one year that's a right indicator of how much worried you are you know many christian organizations suffered during the pandemic poor missionaries poor pastors you know why because of hoarding by christians christians are worried we were already worried before the pandemic and then pandemic has put pressure on us and what is the practical tip that jesus gives verse 27 can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to his life or therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own now these are very difficult verses to apply i have gone through most of my life worrying so i know what it is but this is the truth this is the truth so point number 1 anxieties are for those without god you and i have a god point number 2 appreciate life it's a gift from god verses 25 and 26 life is more than food in comparison and body is more than clothes in comparison right that is what the verse 25 and 26 says so life stand alone without any strings attached it's a wonderful gift to cherish right when a baby is born the baby doesn't bring anything no wealth and riches but that life is so precious the lord says 25 26 right why are you worried about your 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 body your you know what you eat look at your life you are worried about your necessities and missing the bigger thing your very life and body right i just want to this is the scene that we have been watching all these months now just imagine you go to the hospital and ask somebody with covid 19 what they want a big house a big car are they worried about their career whether they will get a promotion or a bonus or what they want you know what their answer will be i want to come back home i want good health i want freedom from corona right that is what ultimately that is the core now the same thing if you ask them after a few years the answer would change correct we are all like that when we have everything we are looking for the other things we forget to appreciate this life this is a wonderful life we should be thankful to god that we can breathe oxygen without any mask or ventilator right there are thousands still using concentrators and their lungs are affected badly we miss out to appreciate what god has blessed us with until it is taken away and what does the lord says the lords i've just paraphrased this jesus says birds are well fed and flowers are well dressed and both are not as sophisticated and intelligent as humans yet birds don't go hungry and flowers are dressed in their 
Sunday best. God himself feeds the birds and God himself clothes the flowers. No wonder they never worry. They never hurry and never end up sorry. Right? This is the Lord. The Lord is giving us this comparison. We are God's special creation. And we are much more valuable than birds and flowers. Do you have these? Do you have life? Do you have health? Do you have a job? Are you married? Enjoy. If you have a job, thank God. Quite a few have lost their jobs. If you are married, enjoy the blessings of marriage instead of thinking whether I will have own a house. If you have children, enjoy them now. Play with them. Don't think about what will they become. Right? Appreciate life. It's a gift from God. Now we move on to point number three. Adopt his kingdom's lifestyle. It's a command of God. Here we'll spend a little more time. Hoping we'll have a few more minutes. Matthew 6.33 A very common verse. But seek First his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Added to you. Right? The Lord is telling, don't be anxious. Then the Lord is saying, appreciate life. And he doesn't stop there, thankfully. The Lord is not saying, don't plan for the future. He is not saying, you don't bother if you will receive it or not. The Lord is in, instead interested in our life and all those necessities in today's life. A job, children's education, maybe a home to live. He is concerned. But the formula of the Lord is exactly the opposite. What does the world tell? The world is telling, seek, pursue, run after these things. That is what everything, all the media and the stories of life, of people tell that this is exactly what. But what does God say? He's promising he will give these. Isn't it wonderful? He will give these. And what is our duty? We have only one thing to do. Seek his kingdom Seek his righteousness first. First. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. So, but before we get a little deeper, I want us to understand the word kingdom and righteousness. So, what is a kingdom? We have governments today. But kingdom is a territory, a state or a people or a community ruled or reigned by a king. That is a kingdom. We are ruled by a government, but pretty much the same. We are subject to the rules of the government. We can't do as we like. Lockdown means lockdown. Wear your mask and go, otherwise you'll be fined. Yes, we have to. So that is a kingdom is similar, except that there's a king who is ruling. And what is righteousness? Righteousness means it's a quality of being morally upright. Right? Before that, I want us to think about this. Okay, I want you to pay attention here. As people living in today's lives, what is controlling us really? Is it the government's kingdom? For example, what goes on in the minds of people? What decisions we make? What we watch on TV? What we wear? Which kingdom is controlling? Is it the physical kingdom or is it the spiritual kingdom? It is Satan's kingdom which is controlling. If you look at around the world, because no government will encourage you corruption, greed, sex and violence, right? And this kingdom, this people, this earth is ruled by Satan's kingdom and his unrighteousness. The whole world is in its grip. 
And when Christians imitate the world, what is happening? We are in control of this kingdom. But as opposed to God, uh, this kingdom, we have a, another kingdom, which is God's kingdom and righteousness. This is the place where God is sovereign. He rules, He controls. His standards are the standards. And all those who submit to Him live in His kingdom. That God is first. God's values are followed. What you watch on TV, what you wear, what decisions you make, what ambitions you have, all are under this kingdom. So if you are living under God's authority, you will be doing exactly the way God wants you to live. So that is what is his kingdom and his righteousness. And then he says, Seek. What is seek? Seek is when you are trying to search something. You, you lose your wallet. Lots of money in that. What do you do? You search. You seek. Before you do anything, you seek. And what is the Bible saying? What is the Lord telling? Seek first. That means before doing anything, seek. Seek. Search. We are living in times where there are a lot of opposing forces. Right? There is a battle between two spiritual kingdoms every day to get our attention. There is one God's kingdom and there is Satan's. On a Sunday morning, we, we are quite, you know, uh, pretty much we are under this spiritual kingdom, God's kingdom. But Monday to Saturday, what happens? There is a battle. There is a battle that is going on. Right? And those who are attached to this world will find it hard to leave the earthly kingdom and seek God's kingdom. But what happens when we seek God's kingdom and righteousness first? Does the Lord say, seek God's kingdom first and then seek other things? What you need? No. He says, seek, search, for God's kingdom and His righteousness. The other things that you are worried about, that will get added to you. That will be given to you as a promise. Something that you are sincerely worried about in this life. The world is running after them, but I will give you these things. Of course, He will give it in His terms and in His time. The people of the world will pursue and stress. But when you seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, these things will run after us. And that is a testimony of millions of Christians. But this is a very difficult word to uh, promise to believe, right? Seek first and these things will be added. But the problem is that they will be added many years later. Now you seek God's kingdom and His righteousness. Many years later, these will be given. You know, Amazon, when they promise you cash back, discount, do you believe? We all believe. We trust them. How much more God? And the Lord is saying the same. Trust me. Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. Live under my authority. I will give these things. And what does it mean when we, I'm sorry, uh, what is not living in his kingdom and his righteousness? Right? Simple. If you're spending more time on TV and Facebook and YouTube or WhatsApp and you don't have time for the Lord, you are not living in his kingdom and his righteousness. If your spiritual life is not fine, you're not spending you're you're spending only time building your wealth and your career, 
and giving time for your pleasures you are not living in the in his kingdom and his righteousness if you are only focused on studies and neglecting bible studies and prayer as a student you are not if you regularly miss sunday service or bible studies or prayer time because of the things of this world then you are not if you are not giving enough of your money to the church if you are not giving where there is a need and most of your money is going on spending on yourselves and your pleasures or investing in houses or properties then you are not right when it comes to a job our lord doesn't want substandard work but he doesn't want us to get all those things at the cost of his kingdom and his righteousness remember joshua god gave him success because he gave god's word the priority right now what happens when we seek his kingdom and his righteousness we enjoy god's peace right our stress levels will go down because we are trusting the lord there itself we save a lot of money on medicines we we'll live more joyful and abundant lives our closeness to god grows we grow in maturity in the lord our prayers are answered our giving improves we give more because we are not worried god's work and word spreads better and faster our family benefits our children benefit because we are spending more time and this one i like our desire for fancy and lucrative things itself diminishes in this world we are not looking for big big things but there are also drawbacks when you don't seek his kingdom of course you don't lose salvation but then you will lose rewards in on in heaven you lose peace you are worried you are sick right as we live in this world our thinking what we think should be completely controlled by his kingdom and we need to adopt this lifestyle our citizenship is in heaven you know many of us are comfortable living in this kingdom and so to come out of this is very difficult now in times like these in the last one year if you were to assess ask yourself this question did you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness maybe in the last 2 3 months when things were quite terrible what did we do where were we were we under the authority of our god when the virus is crippling the world you know what happens everyone's focus is self correct it's very true my health my children my money my job they are worried but seeking the lord's kingdom and righteousness means we think more about others the temptation is to hoard wealth not give but when you are seeking god's kingdom and righteousness you give because the need is so huge 2020 we were tested right we were tested so much we had to trust god for our future and also we had to give more because the need had increased and 2021 the need has skyrocketed <clears throat> right many of our brothers and sisters are still in icu with bills as high as 35 to 40 lakhs <clears throat> many children have become semi orphans are you listen to my question are you ready to share your purse sharing means not just giving the 10% is giving a substantial portion are you ready to give are you ready to help these semi orphans are you ready to help these dear ones who are spending lakhs are you willing to give that is seeking god's kingdom and his righteousness
how can we give more when we don't have guarantee of our jobs how can we give more when our children we don't know the children's future how do we do it what is the lord telling oh you of little faith so we need faith faith that what god has promised for the future after 5 10 15 years but today i have to seek you know there are articles there are many things who say that this is the best time to invest land prices are low stock prices are you know volatile they are low they were low actually last year you know something this is the best time to invest trust me this is the best time to invest in god's kingdom store treasures in heaven by giving generously this is the best time to invest in god's kingdom your money your energies your time give it to the lord you know last year there was lockdown this year also semi lockdown how did you spend your time did you you know god actually compelled us to stay with our families we were working from home my question is did you also invest in your home in your wife your husband and your children did you spend time with the lord and his word that it will never come back this last one year did you spend enough time in prayer did you not do enough for the poor that is seeking his kingdom and his righteousness because when you live under his kingdom his kingdom and his righteousness is very different a lot of them have spent their times and energy are because of anxiety on their own selves maybe watching a lot of netflix entertainment or complaining right but those who seek god's kingdom first spend their first hour with god spend their first day with god's people give the first fruits of their salary to god they acknowledge god for all their achievements and success and they consult god first for all their decisions of life this is something that i learned from uncle pc vargas these are the five things so what are the three things we learned the three a's if you are paying attention what is the first a i didn't ask questions before but i'll ask i'll while i end what is the first a anybody anxiety yes anxieties so let us have this practice of identify our anxiety the first point is anxieties are for those without god number 2 appreciate right appreciate this life it's a gift from god and what is the final the last thing where we spend a little more time adopt the kingdom lifestyle right so in times like these we continue to seek his kingdom and his righteousness and no other time in history we will get this opportunity and with these thoughts i close let's close our eyes and let's just ponder on what we have heard what are you anxious about my dear brother and sister do you appreciate the life that you have and what's your lifestyle are you seeking his kingdom and his righteousness every day all the time are you living under his authority 
the Jesus who gave his life for you, who shed his blood for you, who purchased you, are you living under his authority? And in times like these, are we seeking his kingdom and his righteousness? I would request uh, Matthew Anna to to pray and close this this time of meditation. Thank you for the word, Brother Frankie. The word worry comes from a German word, which means to strangle and to choke. That means worry strangles you. For a believer, worry chokes a relationship with God. And psychologists say 90% of our worries revolve around insignificant issues. And 60% of our worries never really happen. A believer is called to cast his burdens on the Lord. In fact, a worry is an ugly sin in the sight of God. Because you're telling God that I don't believe you will take care of me. It is an ugly sin. We don't realize it. And... Most of the worries is a what-if worry. You'll be enjoying good health and you worry about what if my health is affected. You'll enjoy sufficient resources. What if I lack those resources? So let us trust in the Lord. Lean on the Lord. He's our father. Today is Father's Day, right? He's our father. When God is your father, we have nothing to worry about. Will the son of the richest man in India worry about what he should eat or drink or whether he'll have sufficient money or resources? No. How much more should we be without worry? We are in God's hands. Whatever he does, we are in his hands. Anything that happens in our life has to pass through his love for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word and pray, dear Lord, that if you always remember, anxiety is not for those who believe in you, Lord Jesus. You may be concerned, we may be planned, but may we not be anxious and worried and be turn it into an unhealthy kind of oppression. Lead us to trust in you cast our cares on you. Enjoy this beautiful life you have given us on earth. May we be filled with your joy. May we choose joy, Lord. And most important, may we seek your kingdom. May we not seek to protect ourselves, but may we seek to be a blessing in your name to those who are in need, to those who are suffering. We thank you, we praise you, Master. Accept this prayer, for we offer this in the sweet and exalted name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Please meet.